heaven cannot be measured. It knows no bounds. Whatever the God's decree is accomplished. To ease your impious doubts, you should look at an oak tree and a linden nearby at the Phrygian hills, both ringed by a low wall. I've been to the place myself. had happily passed their youth, and here they had reached old age, enduring their poverty lightly by owning it freely and being content with the little they had. household consisted of two, each giving and taking the orders. So when the gods had found their way to this humble dwelling, Philemon moved forward a bench and asked them to rest their limbs, while Baucis bustled around to spread a rough covering over it, then crossed to the hearth to brush the wood ash away from the embers of yesterday's fire and bring it to life by feeding it leaves and dry tree bark gnawing her feeble puffing for bellows. Next she stripped the outer leaves of the cabbage while he lifted the chine of bacon off from the blackened beam and chopped a piece from the back they had carefully saved for so long. That was finished. A molded wine bowl of similar silver was set on the table with goblets carved out of beech and coated with golden wax on the inside. After that, it did not take long for the hot main course to be brought from the hearth. <laughs> to crown this humble fare, the smiles on the old folks' faces betokened a wealth of unfailing kindness. A wealth of unfailing kindness. Golden wax on the inside. <laughs> Meanwhile, whenever 
the mixing bowl got empty. It seemed to refill of its own accord with the wine welling up by itself. <laughs> Stunned and scared by this wonder, Philemon trembling and pauses, lifting their upturned hands into the air to the lords of heaven and fervently prayed for forgiveness after serving so poorly prepared a repast. <laughs> then they placed them with serious guests by killing the goose. They're only one which guarded the tiny farm, but the bird kept fluttering away, exhausting the elderly couple and long eluding their grasp, till at last it appeared to have flown to the gods themselves for refugee. We are gods. You must not kill it. Your neighbors shall pay the price they deserve for their wicked impiety. You alone shall be spared from the coming disaster! Now, we simply ask you to leave your home and follow our footsteps up to the mountain. The couple obeyed. They were just a bow shot away from the top when they had turned and saw that the other houses were underwater with only their own still standing. And while they gazed in amazement, lamenting the fate of their neighbors, their little cottage, a small home even for two to inhabit, was changed to a temple! gently addressed him. You good old man, and you, the wife that this goodness deserves, now name whatever boon you desire. Philemon conferred for a moment with Baucis before advising the gods of their joint decision. We ask to be priests and to guard your temple. And since we have passed our years together in peace, let the same hour carry us off. So I need not look on my dear wife's grave. Nor she have to bury my body. Their wish was granted. As long as life allowed them, they served as the temple's guardians. Time had taken its final toll, and while they were casually standing in front of the steps of the building, telling the sanctuary's history, both Philemon and Baucis witnessed their partner sprouting leaves on their worn old limbs. As the tops of the trees spread over their faces, they spoke to each other once more while they could. Farewell, my beloved. A single breath while the bark kept closing their lips and concealed them forever. <laughs> <laughs>